All right, guys, today we're going to slide tandems. So, some of you guys who haven't got into trucking yet or looking to, if you're looking to come to Prime, by the way, uh, let me know in the comments. Hit me up. I'll put my driver link code in the uh, referral code, I'm sorry, in the description below. Um, you can use that if you want to apply for Prime and put me down as a referral if you want. If not, no biggie. Um, but at worst case scenario, you get a free video on how to slide tandems. Nobody really showed me this. Um, my trainers went over it briefly once or twice and then uh, I kind of just had to figure this out on my own for the most part. Uh, but I'll show you one mistake I was making as well. But anyways, let your air pressure build up to 125. As you can see there, it's right on 125 so that's good. And then come over here, pull your trailer air supply. Parking brake, as you can see, trailer air supply. Usually when you park, pull this. Um, I hardly ever do this unless I'm on really unlevel ground. If I'm on level ground, just use the parking brake. Uh, trailer brake. Pull it out. We're gonna go outside. And not to get too far ahead, but uh, some of you guys, when I talk about tandems, of course, you've got your tractor, trailer, the rear, you slide these back and forth. Depend on your weight. Anyway, you go right up here by the, your uh, on the Prime trailers, right by the scale. Right up here, see that lever right here? I'm gonna grab this, pull it out, and then when I do, that little nipple right there should go in. Well, and it did not go in. But I will show you though, it's got tension on it, it wants to go in. But if you see that gap on the right side, and there's nothing over here on the left. It's because this trailer has just got shifted a little bit and it's got just enough tension on that, right, on this thing right here where it should have popped in. If this trailer was just shifted just a little bit this way, there would have been gap on both sides and it would have pulled in by itself. Um, but what you can do is check the rear one out. Same thing. So a lot of times what you can do is go back up into the truck and rock it just a little bit. I mean rock it, I mean leave the... Get back here. Leave the trailer brake on. Um, this one right here. Take this one off. Push it in. Put it in drive or reverse. And rock it just a little bit. Like just barely touch the gas a little bit. You can't drive in, in video as far as Prime's policy, so I'm gonna set this down on the uh, top here for a second, and then um, I'm gonna rock it and then see if the pins pop in. If you rock it back and forth, sometimes you can hear it. You probably won't be able to in the video, but um, you can hear it in person. And those pins may pop in. If they don't, then I'll show you what to do after that. All right, hang on just one second. Check the other side. You got to make sure when it does that, all sides, all the uh, both sides are in. So that one's in. You see, and then this one, that one in as well. So what you can do, probably not good on the equipment. I don't know for a minute, but you can hit it with a hammer. Sometimes just a little peck or two. If it's out, of course it's not out right now. But if it was, it's flush sticking out here. You can hit it a couple of times. 
and knock it in that way. Sometimes just one of them hang. Maybe three of them go in and one sticks out. Um, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I assume that all four of them went in, I get in and try to move it and it doesn't work and you gotta get it back out and figure out what's going on. But um, so basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave the tractor brakes on. I mean, I'm sorry, we're gonna leave the trailer brakes on, which is gonna keep those wheels in place. And then when you pull forward, the whole trailer is gonna go forward. The wheels are going to stay where they are in that rail system right here that's what that's for it's for this trailer to slide forward on that rail system while the wheels don't move and then when you get the wheels let's say you want them in you know one farther back because it'll carry more of the load uh, toward the front and i'll get into i'll talk about that here in a second how that works um, then once you slide them, the wheels will, the trailer will go forward, the wheels will stay the same, so the wheels will appear to be moving backwards. But really, you're just sliding the trailer forwards and backwards, and the wheels are staying stationary. So, let's say we want them all the way back. Let's say we want all the way back to the rear. You can see here, there's really no gap between the tire and this uh, thing for aerodynamics skirt. But you can see all this back here. So let's say, just real quick, let's just say there was too much weight and there's a weigh scale right there and there's one in the tractor for the front but let's say there was too much weight on the um right now if this whole thing was loaded hang on that low battery sign if this whole thing was loaded um, most of the weight on the back end back here would be on the back end but if you slide this trailer forward when you get more of the wheels underneath the back end it's going to shift more weight this direction if that makes sense i'm probably confusing you but either way we're just working about sliding tandems today and then you can worry about which way to slide them i'll do another video on that depending on how much weight and then i'll show you how to use the weight scale here which all prime trailers have not all are accurate for sure but they're all pretty darn close and then there's a weight scale inside your tractor I'll show you that once I do how to weigh your um, weigh your load, get it where you're in 10 specs, so you don't get a ticket. So let's get in here. Remember, I want to slide the trailer forward. The wheels are going to stay where they're at. I'm just going to put it in drive, and I'm going to drive forward, and the whole tractor and the trailer will go forward, and those wheels will stay where they're at, which will invertly make them go back, and the trailer goes forward. Shifting the weight. It all depends on which way you want the weight shifted, of course. Which way you slide the tandems. Your trainer should go over all this, and it may be a little confusing at first which way to slide the tandems, which way the weight go, but there's plenty of videos and stuff that tell uh, about that. Let me set this down again for a second, and I'm going to put it in the drive, and then I'm going to take the uh, parking brake off, the yellow one, and I'm going to leave trailer brake on the red one, the parking brake let my tractor move forward, allow it to go forward, the trailer brake keep those rear wheels on the trailer still where I can pull and slide the trailer forward over top of the wheels. So let me set this down for a second, we'll do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. a little bit as well because now those uh, pins aren't popped out inside that uh, those holes yet but I want them to be because I want it to lock into place so the way I'm going to do that is first I'm going to push this in supplies air back to those pins to be able to ready to push them out and then I'm going to do like I did whenever they were stuck I'm going to rock the truck back and forth just a little bit until it goes into one of those holes I hope this is making sense but let me set this down and I'm going to do that and then we'll see if we get those pins to pop into the hole Alright, so 
take a push the trailer brake in, supply air to those pins, if you can hear me. And then push the parking brake in, make sure my seat belt is on. Never move your truck at all unless the seat belt's on. Put it in, I'm gonna put it in reverse. Now that supplied air to those brakes, I'm gonna pull the trailer air supply back out, the red one. I'm gonna leave the yellow one in so I can move the tractor. But now I want that those pins to pop into place. Rock it back a little bit. Truck rocked. Put it back in neutral. Pull the yellow parking brake. Take the seatbelt off. And let's go check and see. Let's go check and see what happened. So I did all that. Now the wheels, if you notice, are all the way to the back. They did move. All right, the wheels were exact same place. I should have dropped a line on them. If you look in the video earlier, you can probably see where they did move. They're from the same places where that pavement goes right here. But the trailer was back here. And I drove the trailer forward while the wheel stayed still, therefore shifting the, the weight of the load, right? And when you go to CDL school, you'll learn, you know, the weights, the front and back. 34,000 are allowed to be back here. 34,000 here. 12,000 here. Um, and that's, we'll get into another video of that. But that's just, basically, that's how the slide depends. Still probably a little confusing. This is one of those things where you need to actually physically do it probably a couple times. As you can see there, the pins popped out. That was that last part whenever I pushed the air supply into the trailer, the red one. So these pins would have pressure to be able to pop out. And then I pulled it back out and pushed the yellow tractor brakes in and rocked it just a little bit, just moved it just a little bit to where those pins would fall into one of those holes. And at this point in time, I was trying to get them all the way to the rear. The wheels all the way to the rear, which would shift the weight. Like I said, it would shift the weight forward if I wanted the weight to be shifted forward. And I would just do the opposite if I wanted the weight to be shifted to the rear. Same process, it's just I would back it up instead of pull forward. I just back it up. Those wheels would still be right there in the exact same spot. I'd back the trailer up. The wheels would stay still. The trailer would go back here again. And the wheels would appear to be up here further. If they didn't move the whole time, it just shifted the trailer. It was shifting the trailer over top of the wheels. The wheels are stationary, shifts the trailer forward or backward over those wheels. All right, I don't want to start repeating myself. I feel like, um, it's, again, if you did it a few times, you would, one of those things in my opinion where the concept's a lot easier if I do something. You make it tell me all day long and I get it. But once I actually physically do it, it's a lot better for me. And that's it. Tendons. If anybody's got any questions, I'll try to do some more videos. If I'm rambling too much, let me know in the comments below. If I'm not being clear or concise in what I'm trying to convey, the message, or what I'm trying to show, please let me know that as well. I'm going to try to get better at these videos, but a lot of these are going to be for you know, new guys just getting started. Things that I wish I would have known. A little hammer trick. Oh, just real quick. So what I was doing was... I didn't know what I was doing whenever I first started. So every time I went to pull them, I was told wherever, when you pull them, those pins pop in. And every trailer I got for the first several days, none of them would hardly, hardly pop in. And that's probably because I just, when I parked, they had tension on there. So every single time I was out there hitting them with a the hammer, every single time I slid tandems. And I couldn't wonder why I'm the only person in the parking lot sliding tandems, having to use a hammer on every single trailer and I don't see anybody else doing it. I know, it's probably funny, you can make fun of me in the comments, that's fine. But, um, I, asked, I just asked someone, I asked another truck driver, I was like, what's the deal? Why does none of the pins ever pop in? And he's the one explained to me, like, hey, the thing gets into a bind, um, and those pins don't sit easily or straight on inside the holes. Like I was telling you about, where there's more space on one side, see right now they're pretty good. Well, it's a little bit off on this back side. But um, he said that's when you rock the trailer just a little bit, just enough to take the tension off wherever there's not enough space wherever it's touching like on this side if you take that tension off just enough just by rocking forward or backward the truck yeah, there's, there's already pressure on those pins enough to pull them in 
and then that's why everybody else would just jump back in their truck slide the tendons if they were rocking it real quick for a second getting the pins to pop in and then they would slide them and i wouldn't i wasn't grasping that concept at first i didn't know that they were that's what they were doing i just thought every truck I, or every trailer i had the first several days just wasn't worth the crap and the pins wasn't working on any of them that's what i thought so, embarrassing moment i don't care learn from my mistakes if you want to be out there for days on end watch this video and wonder why things won't pop in and think you have to be out there with a hammer every single time beating them in like i was but all right guys this video is way too long if you want to see another video on on uh reefer uh trailer oh let me show you one more thing real quick this is definitely a long video i'm sorry if you just want to see how to slide cannons then i'm done with that part but i was going to show you this is a multi-stop load so i didn't put the um seal on but i got like six stops on this load and i normally i don't want to get into that i'm gonna say i normally don't do multi-stops but they, i never have good luck with them i just put it that way but anyways but they pay good so it just kind of depends you get paid for multi-stop load versus just one stop anyways always always Please do yourself a favor, put a lock on your trailer. If you don't, you'll be driving down the road. Somebody ain't got nothing better to do at Prime, or you know, there's a reason why we do this. But they'll get your trailer number, and then they'll drive up beside you. I'm not gonna walk all the way up there, but there's your truck number on the side, everybody knows that, and they'll get your truck number and then they'll call you in and let Prime know that you didn't put a lock on the trailer. That's a big no-no. And the reason why we do it is we do it on on um, empty trailers as well as full trailers. And the real reason why is because we want it to always appear that it's locked. And we don't want people just getting in there even if they think it's empty. They get in there and I'll show you. They'll tear down the, um, if I do this one-handed, the air conditioning units on the inside part of it. And, oh, there we go. That didn't work. It is difficult one-handed get inside your trailer put trash in there do all kinds of weird things either way you just don't want nobody in the trailer whether it's empty or not you got it all cleaned out and somebody gets in there and trashes it now you got to clean it back out before you get your next load go to a washout depending on what it is so this load is actually fridge right now so i'm not going to be too long in here but this is a load and this is how so it's already dirty because there was it was loaded all the way to the rear here I've already had three stops and um you know that's just kind of what it looks like this is from tyson i can say that but um i think there was bacon and things like that in there so this is the air duct here what it does is it runs all the way from the front if people kind of wonder all the way up there and the front on the outside of the trailer is the um, air conditioning unit it runs here and it comes out you can see there's little gaps all the way down through here and also just runs underneath this all the way to the back and comes out gaps on both sides there and there so it supplies air all the way to the sides all the way down through here and all the way to the back of the trailer and then you got to watch sometimes you're doing your inspections you got to always look in the trailer one for trash you know you want to do washouts but you always look for that it'd be tore down and sometimes it's just yeah, if you can see, it's Velcro on that little strip. So sometimes it's just falling down. You can stick it back up there. You get something to stand on, you can reach it, and stick it back up there. But I always look for uh, that, and then uh, big gouges on the inside. You know, this is part of your inspection. You gotta inspect it outside. In, in, in the school that I went to, but we never once opened the back door and went on the inside. But here, you know, there could be big gouges in here, or the forklifts will come in. They'll run up on the sides and they'll put big gouges in these trailers sometimes. Anyways, so that's what a load looks like. I took the load bar down. There was a load bar right here. Each load, I have a load bar. And I started in the back and I, as they took some off, three stops, I put it toward the front. This one right here, I'm literally on flat ground. I've already drove over here. It's about 200 yards from where I'm parked at. So this one's good to go. This box is up here like this. This was actually ham. 
Hearthstone. Yeah. So I'm delivering to Gordon's Foods on this one. I'm gonna get out of here though, so I can shut this door, keep this temperature where it needs to be. But what I was getting at was that's what a load looks like. And what you're supposed to do if you have more than one stop, if you have one stop, you'll do this before you even leave. Um, if you have more than one stop, you'll get more than one seal, and then either you or the last receiver put this on so they can say. So once you put this on, you don't go back in there. I was putting it on. Normally, you're already be on. Um, but since I was putting it on, I left it off just so I could show you guys the inside of that. Wow, this is 20 minutes. I'll get back up. I feel like I gotta do some push ups or something for you guys. Part of my fitness channel, the punishment for taking a 21 minute video. So if you still, if you still with me, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do 25 push ups. Just, just because. I took up too much of your guys' time. That's my punishment. You no, know, next time I do a video, if it's this long, then uh, I'll do 50. That'll be my promise to you guys. So here's, here's 25 places. I'm going to put it towards something that you can see. That drain right there, I guess. Anyway, alright guys, I'm gonna let you go. Remember, don't quit when you're tired, stop when you're finished.